I, I'm Matthew. I hope you know me by now. If you don't, come introduce yourself to me later. Um, this is FESCO, Fedora Engineering Steering Committee, one of our, you know, the technical leadership body in Fedora, an all elected um, panel. And uh, we have most of the people here. Uh, I'm not on this panel, but I thought I'd you know, introduce the general idea. And I will run around with the microphone if you have questions because we're recording this. And I'm sitting in that chair right there. <laughs> 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 All right. Uh, and with that, here's Fesco. <laughs> Should we do an introduction round? Do, do you want to know who actually those people are? <laughs> Never met any of you yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm Alexandra Fedorova. I, I'm book war on IRC. I'm book war everywhere, almost everywhere, not on Twitter. So it's not me who's spamming Twitter from book war account. And uh, yeah, Fedorova is my real name. So if you just are wondering. <laughs> and moving on. I'm Peter Shabata, content on IRC. Been doing this for a while. You might know me. I'm also responsible for modularity in a way, so you can hate me. So. Uh, I'm uh, Kevin Finzi, and I've been on Fesco, I think, since it started. So I've been around a long time, and I'm not really sure what I do. So. So I'm Igor. It's probably me who was touching your packages, and you don't like me because I'm doing that over and over. <laughs> I'm trying to do crazy things with modularity and whatnot, so, but I would love to talk to you. Uh, I'm Zbyszek, I work on Systemd and uh, also sometimes touch many packages. I'm Justin Forbes, a uh, Fedora kernel maintainer and been around for a bit, I suppose. Hi. Right. Uh, does anybody on the panel want to say something or make a statement or should we go right to questions? Right to questions. That's all right. That, that's what I figured. All right. Uh, does anybody have a question for Fesco? Wait. Oh, let me. <laughs> Why do we do mass rebuilds? <laughs> uh, to take advantage of uh, new compiler features, etc., uh, changes in RPM itself for payload and such not, and to also see that things still build correctly, because the best time to figure that out is at the mass rebuild time and not uh, five minutes after the big exploit for your package was released. Actually. With CI and gating in place, <laughs> we have plans to add the rebuild check for every change you do, so it shouldn't happen like a mass rebuild event uh, just once in the release cycle. But there is a very controversial topic, I think, at least I, I think it's controversial, like if we need to check that packages are possible, it is possible to rebuild packages after the change, or should we actually do the rebuild and update packages which were depending on this one? So I expect there will be heated conversation about this on Fedora development list, so get ready to it. Merek <laughs> uh, Suhi, uh, speaking. What's blocking uh, Fedora as Windows Linux subsystem? Why we don't have Fedora there? That's a question for me. That was a question for me. <laughs> this, <laughs> this, uh, why, why don't we have Windows subsystem for Linux? Um, this is not a technical problem. This is a legal agreement problem. And it actually works fine. The problem is getting it into the Microsoft App Store. And this is a model we're not prepared for. Basically, the Fedora model is we made some open source. It's available in open source license. Come and get it. There are things you can do with the license. There are things you can do with the trademark that we give you permission for or things you can ask for. In order to get into the Windows Store, uh, there is an app agreement you sign with Microsoft. And there are clauses in that which we as an open source community and Red Hat as the company ultimately responsible for those that signing. Uh, just couldn't agree to. So we're kind of stuck at that. 
Uh, I would love for Microsoft to come and say, hey, we're part of the open source world. We can just work in an open source way without having um, company, company legal agreements blocking everything. Um, but we're not ready to do that yet. I guess so that's the. Is that forever or? It's stuck until we find some way around that particular legal problem, basically. So so po poss possibly forever. Uh, I mean, people, there are new people at Microsoft and new ways of thinking of things at Microsoft that might change this. Because really, right now, if they wanted to, Microsoft could take Fedora, put it in WSL, use the Fedora logo and say, here's Fedora for WSL. They just don't want to do that. They want us to take on the um, risk and liability of that. But just to, to add to that, right, it's kind of mind-blowing that anyone has agreed. Yeah, to right. This. Langdon says that it is mind-blowing that anyone has agreed to this. But that's you know, not something we can do, do anything about. All right. <laughs> Fesco topics. <laughs> Yeah. General question for everyone. What do you think uh, the health of FESCO as an organizational body is in terms of things like uh, getting new members on, productivity, things like that? Um, do you see it as being generally healthy and or anything you need to improve or what, what's the general mood? So So we, we uh, made some uh, process improvements. Some uh, I mean, last year, uh, the rules were changed to approve more tickets offline, and uh, this year we changed the um, non-responsive maintainer process to actually put more work on Fesco but less work on people who report non-responsive maintainers. And I think that generally our uh, voting speed and processing speed is good enough. Uh, FESCO should not, in, in my opinion, should not be a body that sets the policy and decides. It should be that the uh, community comes up with stuff and FESCO basically rubber stamps uh, things that have been discussed uh, to such an extent that it's technically clear what the right choice is. I mean, if there, there were multiple FESCO votes where we would have uh, five to four votes, this would be a sign of stuff being decided at the wrong level because FESCO members don't have enough technical knowledge to 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 decide specific technical matters. It's, in my opinion, FESCO should work as a um, well as, as a mechanism to have public discussion and public approval of changes that will happen. And I think we are doing okay in this regard. I think that's true, but also sometimes FESCO actually decides on the policies and the, they defines the direction of the distribution on the technical level, and those tickets, they are open for years sometimes, <coughs> and they are not really moving anywhere. I think we need actually to, to figure out how to, how to deal with those, and I don't really have an answer to that, but uh, generally, yes, I would say FESCO is healthy, but it's still, there's space for improvement. From my perspective, like I'm a UB member of FESCO, <laughs> basically, so it comes to change process and non-responsive maintainer process. Uh, essentially, there are two things which FESCO is dealing most of the time. For change process, it feels like really when there is a help from community, when community has a proper discussion of topics on Fedora development list, then it makes the life of FESCO so much easier. You just go f fetch the data community provides, the feedback uh, we have, and you can actually make a decision on that. So we think we are stuck with, with the usually things which are not discussed enough on the community level. And this is like really becomes painful because then it's, FESCO needs to figure out like how to even discuss those things and how to think about them. So the more we have a feedback from the community on, on some changes, the, the easier life of FESCO is. And usually there is uh, quite, a, quite good feedback before we even start di voting on, on something. And based on this feedback, the life of FESCO is quite easy. <laughs> Hi, uh, my question is that uh, when there's a policy change which is approved by FESCO, or when there's a new policy which is approved by FESCO, uh, would it be FESCO's responsibility to ensure that 
whoever is actually responsible for implementing the policy does actually implement it? Um, yes and no. Uh, not, not really. The, what, what it comes down to is when you ask for a change, you've approved a change, we can approve that direction, but you, we can't force people to do work. Uh, this is a community project. This is, you know, if FESCO doesn't have a budget. Um, occasionally, if we have something that, that we can justify, we might be able to get budget through a team that way. Uh, but for a lot of things, you know, if you come up with a, a plan that you want to change, you also need to get the people behind it who would actually implement that change. Uh, we can ask nicely, and a lot of times someone will step up and do that, but we can't force it. I know you'll answer any question, but what is the question you wish somebody would ask you? <laughs> I have actually a topic which I wanted to discuss. So uh, the question is, why do we need a change process and why do we have it? And uh, one of the Concerns I have, uh, like sometimes I see the change coming when it says like, let's update uh, this package to a new version. And then this change goes to FESCO and like, honestly, there is no reason for me as a FESCO to say no to updating a package in Fedora. It's like, this is what we do. Yeah, we, we take packages, we update them. So in, it, in this uh, sense, this up change approval process looks redundant, but I think that it's just because it's a approval of a change is only one small aspect of what change is supposed to be. And so I think we are not doing a good job in making sense out of this change description and out of this change process. So uh, what what is important in when, when you file a change is not that FESCO approves it. What's important is that everyone knows what you're going to do you have a place to communicate this, you have a place to explain the impact of this change, you have a place for people to provide the feedback. So it shouldn't be like, oh, I got a FESCO approval, I'm done with this change bureaucracy and I'm just going to do keep working on my stuff. So I really would like to ask people who work on changes in Fedora to understand that change is not for FESCO. Change is for you and for people who work with you and uh, it's important to write down, I even like we know that the change will be approved because it's an update to upstream version, like no, no, no problem with that. But please still add the required information, add the impact, add the uh, non-impact, because all of these things are important for current change, but they also important as a historical document and like three years later, you can go back to this change and like, we probably updated once this uh, library before, and then we had those impacts, and so we cannot uh, we keep this information and we reuse this information. So it's important also, like once you find, uh, once you're done with change, you record what you forgot while you were filing this change in the beginning. So like change is the ultimate project organization tool. It's not just something FESCO asks you to do, so FESCO can say yes or no. This uh, one of the things I, I really like to communicate to wider <laughs> audience in Fedora. Have you talked to Ben Cotton? Were you at his talk about this? I, I, I was just going to I, say, I, often the changes are also a source of documentation or inspiration for other distributions to do things. <laughs> so it's good. Ben here, is he hiding? I, I, huh. I hope he's okay. Uh, <laughs> I saw him last night. <laughs> So I'd like to piggyback on the change uh, question, and I'd like to have uh, Fisco's opinion about this. Uh, a lot of the change proposals are actually uh, regarding a very specific uh, Fedora version, so uh, we want this change to land in Fedora 31, Fedora 32, and so on. And something we've been doing with the, the right-getting initiative is also 
provide a change proposal to FESCO and the wider community as well about changes that are not directly linked to a certain distribution, but changes that are happening in the way we do things in the community in general. And I was wondering what FESCO is, uh, is on this. I actually think this is a good idea and we should build more on that, but I don't know if I'm alone thinking this or if there are more people agreeing on that. So that probably wouldn't be a FESCO thing. That would be more like a council matter. Uh, it might be somehow part of the of the change process that, that Ben was talking about. Unfortunately, he's not here. But I think FESCO really is about <coughs> driving the technical changes for a specific release. What you are talking about is, is a little bit different. I agree and disagree on that. The, the change proposal was much about how to technically implement an objective that was already approved by Council as something that is important for Fedora. So it's not about do we want to do that or not, but is this solution something that FESCO agrees with? So it was much more on the how to implement it rather than if we should implement it. So th there was discussion uh, not too long ago about about trying to extend the release cycle so we could do some longer term things and one of the things that came out of that discussion was you know it's okay to have things that we, we have goals that are not the next six months that are going to be a year or two years to implement and go through um, the way that the change process is kind of written i think or or implemented seems poorly suited to that but i don't believe that you, know, you have to think exactly within those lines. I think it's it's pretty easy to say uh, we want to do a change, and you could say I want to do a, a change for Fedora 32. Um, that is the start of this implementation, and then you know we expect to be finished by Fedora 33 or 34. And as long as you've got a plan and laid that out, I I believe that that would work within the change process bounds fairly well. Uh, probably the change is not the top uh, level of hierarchy when you think about uh, general Fedora development. So you can have something on a higher level which uh, then splits into multiple changes over several releases. You don't have to try to fit in everything in, in the one release and one change. It's, it's okay to have initiatives which span several of those. Yeah? So a good example is the Python 3 rollover which, is, which has been going on and will be going on for few more releases and it's split into multiple uh, changes and I don't see this as a problem. Yeah. I guess we don't have a fixed word for this. Well, like we have objectives but, but not, not like, so something which spans multiple changes. But, yeah, but, but anyway, <laughs> it, it, wor it exists, yeah? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Hello. Oh, my. Uh, so uh, Fedora's always been a really great place to put somewhat disruptive changes through. So you would mentioned Python 3 a little bit ago. Um, there's lots of stuff that come on the horizon. And we kind of have this side boat in the couple repos to do sort of, we'll call it oddball Fedora stuff. Uh, but it still feels like there's not really a strong engine to test changes before they go in. So like if somebody here said, hey, we should start doing a free BSD kernel. Like we don't really have a way to do that without forcing people in Rawhide on a free BSD kernel for a while, right? So is there any plans or discussions or anything else uh, uh, about ways to do very disruptive operating system level changes uh, that are not official Fedora? Because we kind of did this with CoreOS and Atomic, right? It's a very different kind of thing, but it was also very artisanal and white gloved the way we did it. Uh, is, is there some way to make Cope repos more uh, uh, do more things, or you know, just if we want to change, if we want to test major changes without forcing them into rawhide, you know, like like the future of SE Linux or you know something like that. Is is there a way to do that? So I think that um, we cannot expect the core Fedora infrastructure to to be the place to implement those changes. Uh, I expect that stuff like this is done uh, in a on a separate system set up by one person or a group of people for, for a specific purpose. Like for example, with Python 3.8, now there is a corporate that has uh, 2,000 packages rebuilt with a different version of Python. And um, this, is, this is possible because uh, 
all stuff in Fedora is uh, open source stuff that you can modify yourself as you, as you see fit. And as long as we keep this possible and not too hard, and I think that this is the way to go. I mean, I, I have my own server on which I'll sometimes compile a few thousand packages if I want to test different things, and it's not a big issue. Um, there were discussions about uh, modularity and uh, proposals to have uh, modules set up in a way that it would be really hard to do stuff on your own, and it, it will actually interfere pretty strongly with this kind of approach because you wouldn't be able to do stuff outside of the core infrastructure. Um, so I think that as long as we avoid stuff like this, we, we should be good. Uh, yeah, question was, if you avoid stuff like that, how do you evolve the distro? Well, uh, so let's say that I want us to, to, uh, to switch to K3BSD kernel. Um, I buy, well, gather a bunch of machines, boot them with Fedora running on the latest FreeBSD kernel. I show everybody that it's good. Uh, and after I have shown that this is good, maybe fix a few bugs, uh, then I say, okay, let's, let's switch over, and then we switch over, right? Well, uh, so I have to, I mean, for, for, it depends on the scope of the change, right? If, if this is a small change, I can do it on my Raspberry Pi. If it is a big change, I will probably need to convince a bunch of people to work with me anyway. Well, and this is the type of thing that actually, so I, I mean, I'm sure everybody saw the develop list thread about changing the baseline compiler flags and, and basically making sure that everybody, 90% well, of you need to buy new machines. Uh, <laughs> you know, clearly that was turned down, but there's actually a lot of merit to what they were asking for and a reason that we may want to consider something similar. So there, there are, uh, there was some discussion about various ways we could implement that, but that's definitely one of those things that you don't just shove into Fedora, we're going to, or into Rawhide, we're going to have to sidechain somehow and figure out how to implement that. And I don't know, uh, I don't know that we're far along down the thought process of, of how we would do that, but I don't, we don't have an infrastructure that will make that easy to do uh, with, you know, what we have now. But we, we are talking about extending the possibility, like you did it for IoT. Yeah, currently the request is like for any kind of feature, you know, I'm coming to Fedora and I want to try to do this. It definitely doesn't scale well, the approach we, we did with IoT. Uh, so How do you know? What, what do you know about the process? Like? <laughs> uh, we know that if you get hit by a bus, we're in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, I think we, we can agree that FESCO doesn't have a solution for this problem. I think we agree that we have a problem and we want to solve it somehow, but we don't have an uh, answer inside FESCO. This yeah. is answer should come from some other places and we need to just yeah. get into s solving this. Yeah, so this is a valid use case, a reasonable problem, but uh, like FESCO is not in position to solve this for you. It's like you who are in position to propose solutions to uh, it.
have but, a but on, on the other side, you thing. can also not expect that you come to Fedora and say, like, I want to do Fedora for, I don't know, which kind of IoT you, you, you imagine, and then, like, please, Fedora, provide me access to that. This is also not going to work this way. Yeah, so, so we, we cannot just provide as Fedora provide on the on demand any type of hardware out there. No, so there should be some process how you can start with some smaller things which you can manage, and then you get into with Fedora or like where it gets supported properly by the Fedora as a, as a project. Yeah. So I think part of it, f I feel like for IoT, uh, we have a specific thing we did here, which was uh, you made a, f a Fedora Council level objective, and so this is something that is at a, at a top level. Uh, you know, we have prioritized this, we've given a framework for it, and you know, we happen to know that you and the people you're working with can do this without actually needing to drag Fesco into it. Um, so you know, you're, you're not just off doing a rogue operation; you're empowered to do that. And I think that if there are other things that fit into that. Um, people can come to the council with that as well and we can try and figure out a way for that to happen. I don't know, how long are you going to talk? <laughs> yeah. Basically, I just kind of fundamentally disagree with the whole discussion, which is that I don't think it's FESCO's responsibility. I think it's the council's responsibility to figure out how to enable you know, kind of a new thing, right? Um, you know, Fesco has a role, but, you know, we've got to go and put a bunch of, you know, whatever will behind the fact that we want to do IoT, right? The fact that we want to do modularity. Those aren't, they're not, like, at least in, in my opinion, right? It's like Fesco is about the operational aspects of the things that we, we have decided as Fedora to do. Um, the people who make that decision sort of is the council, right? You know, again, going back to Justin's point earlier, is we, we can't actually make anybody do anything, but, you know, we can at least kind of guide where the approach is the right answer. So, you know, when Peter comes along and says, I want to do this IoT thing, we say, hey, well, if you write it up in this objective, we can kind of support that and we can figure out how to make it through there. Um, the next person who comes along and has got that new thing, I don't think they need to figure out how the release engineering process works either. Right? I think they need to come to the council, say, I got this idea, and then the council should be able to come back to them and say, okay, go follow these steps to go accomplish your goal. And some of those steps might involve FESCO and some of them might not. I think there is still like a role of FESCO that uh, we overview that all the initiatives which are currently implemented, by implementing them we don't lose the possibility to offer for other uh, like new spins or some uh, derived work on top of Fedora. So uh, the FESCO role is here is not to provide a, like resources for new initiatives, but it is to uh, verify that new initiatives still can come, uh, can uh, can be worked on. Like I don't know if I explained it pro properly. So so we we need to keep the possibility for people to do things on top of Fedora, and this is the first role to make sure that these possibilities are still there. But when you come with a new thing you want to build on top of Fedora, this is a council uh, responsibility to sponsor you kind of with resources and uh, support to do that. I heard from Ben, he's fine. <laughs> <laughs> Other questions? <laughs> oh, wait, what do we got over here? Brendan, Brendan. Brendan again. <laughs> Hi. Uh, so, if somebody wanted to pursue a FreeBSD kernel or an alternate compiler flag set that was incompatible, what is the right path? to do that, is it going to FESCO? Is it going to the council? Like, if, if we have resources, what's the responsible way to engage? I think you should initially go to the council, definitely, and get such a major change approved as an objective, as, as Matthew said. And after that, we can definitely figure out, like, setting up a shadow shadow instance of Koji and or other, other builders and such, and to test those things out. It's 
it wouldn't be right to just go go straight to Fesco and ask like I, I want a side tag where I will be testing a new kernel. I think that might be too disruptive and it just wouldn't work out. I mean, the, with, with the compiler flag change, that was a thing that I mean, it, we get changes for compiler flags every few releases, usually around security and things like that. So changing the baseline. Um, you know, coming to Fesco with that first was fine, except it was immediately shot down for obvious reasons. Um, like I said, a lot of people would have to replace hardware. So now it becomes a different effort of, yes, it's a great idea to be able to provide binaries that have these these minimum baseline, um, or in theory it's a good idea. So we have to figure out a way to actually do that and test. And now it becomes a much bigger effort than we're just changing our default compile flags. Um, so that needs some, some additional involvement and not just a, it's not just a straight FASCO thing. Maybe to give an example in the FreeBSD case, like if you need a change in current RPM packages and policies to support this effort, then you go to FASCO to approve the change of this policy in the current state of quadri, state of packages, and so on. But like just to start working on it, you go to console because it's a new effort which you built on top. I so just want to say I'm seeing the Pharonix headline from this session. Fedora, consider switch to FreeBSD <laughs> kernel. <laughs> no. It, it's, it's, been de it's been decided already. So returning to the, to the question of flags, uh, I think that going either through the council or Fresco or from the top down is just the wrong approach. The right approach, in my opinion, would be to, to start from the bottom to show that it actually has no measurable improvement in benchmarks and to convince people and to start small with a subset of packages where this makes a difference. And then after it is well known that this is a useful thing and it is well known that it can be done without breaking the world, then maybe we can talk at the FESCO level to make this the default policy. That really depends on the nature of the change. It's, it's much easier to actually to switch kernel or to compiler flags or than to change the infrastructure or the release model and things like that. So for those things, you, you need to go to, to, the, to the body, such as council first, I would say. And yes, you said you, ne you need to convince people that it's absolutely true. You need to convince the council too. So if you, if you have the data. Sure, but, but the, the council should not be setting uh, detailed uh, technical policy yes, decisions. Yes, absolutely not. No. It's just setting the direction of the distribution. I, I also think the council should not be making decisions just um, in the council in our, you know, uh, din dinner party at, at flock situation. We should, uh, the, the Fedora Council decisions should reflect, you know, what, what the community is thinking. It's kind of our job to be leaders that listen and, um, yeah, reflect the discussion that's already going on. So if it comes to the council first, we probably will say, that sounds interesting. Can you make sure there's actually support for this thing that you want to do? Because we're not gonna, it, it, things can't be top down because it just doesn't work because again, we can't tell people um, to do work. Um, maybe Denise can, but um, <laughs> <laughs> no, she says no. <laughs> maybe t t to add a we clarification, ask, yeah. like we, we are, talking about different paths here like if you're going uh, if you choose wrong path and went to a wrong body it's okay yeah. <laughs> we will we will direct you to the right one so don't be afraid to come up with your ideas even if you're not sure who you're supposed to send these ideas for like for council for fesco or just for contributor like you know we, we can start from something and then figure it out so <laughs> don't don't be afraid of that yeah, and on the flip side of that, if you come to someone and then they say, wait, this is the wrong body, go here, it's actually trying to help. It's not just giving you the runaround. I, I think it's also important to note that, like, for the council thing, to use the example of the compiler flags, the council may see that, may see value in that, and may say, this is great, but what should come out of that objective should be uh, provide faster support for newer hardware or something like that, not the, the, the answer there shouldn't be dictating the solution. It shouldn't say, we are going to rebuild all of Fedora with these flags and have a separate distro and release. It, it, should be the, it should be the goal, and then the how should be determined after that as the best way to, to get that goal. Do you have a new question or comment on this? <laughs> I, 
Yeah, no, the, um, what I mean is more of a, um, I think it's fine for things to go to FESCO first because I think the change proposal in FESCO um, is actually a much more open to community feedback and therefore something like the compiler flag, I think, I think it's fine to actually propose that to FESCO, see how the community reacts to it and that's one of the, that's one of the, um, it's one of the points that the FESCO members are taking into account when they design on a change or not. And in this case, the community said, well, we can't, we can't do that because of these and these reasons. And at that time, then, if we want to provide faster support for new hardware, then it is fine to bring it to the, to the council as with a different, okay, we tried the technical solution and that got shut down by the community for good reasons. Now, that doesn't solve our problem to provide faster uh, support for newer hardware. So is, is uh, consider agreeing with this objective? And then, okay, let's go back to, if we can't find the correct, the, if the first solution doesn't work, then we can come back and figure out what is uh, option two, option three, and, and so on. And then work with FISCO to figure out what is the correct way to, to actually fit that objective. Maybe to add, like, rejected change is not a bad thing. It's just like the first step. You, you, if you're cha you like suggested a change, the change got rejected. Is that doesn't mean you should stop everything you're doing. You probably just need to rethink and find a different way uh, to reach your goal. So just rework it a bit. And like people should be afraid of rejecting changes and don't treat this as a failure. It's just the first approach, the first method, and then you go forward. Yeah, hi. Uh, as the person who put in the change request for secure baseline compiler flags, and it, it got turned down in a couple of days, uh, my question is that uh, if I have a, if I if I want a change, does Fesco recommend that I should first go to Fedora Devil List, get some traction on it, and then come to Fesco and ask for a change request? So there is general policy that the change is first sent to Fedora Devil. Uh, and after a week, I believe, it is only opened uh, in the f FESCO tracker. And this is not, not, I mean, this is on purpose, right? The, the, the change should always be discussed first at the mailing lists. But if you are doing some bigger change, for example, some security compiler flex, it definitely would not hurt if before filing the change, figuring out all the details, you would send an email to a devil mailing list asking, I would like to implement this security flex. I would like to do these things. What do you think about it? So do not create change proposal. I will put this, this, and this flag and wait for feedback for it. You can do it in advance. And I'm thinking about these 15 different flags. I'm not sure about this one. What do you think? And I think it's based on whether or not you are sure what you are trying to change. Yeah, like if you if you have already a plan in mind, then you it's better to discuss the plan when you write it as a change and start discussing from starting from there. But if you have idea which you need help to polish, like because writing the change is actually a hard job, and uh, you may need some help from community just to get there to write a first draft of this change, then it's perfectly reasonable to go and start rounds of initial discussions in various mailing lists before you get to actually writing the draft. So just mind the deadlines, but <laughs> you definitely can ask for the community for help to even start with the change, like the, the beginning of it. Well, and, and that's one of the things, too, that'll help you polish. So if I, I have a list of security compiler flags I want to do. Uh, there is a specific reason that this one flag will cause problems for a large number of, of packages um, and a small tweak to that would, would actually be fine. But if, if all of this discussion happens before the change is, is pushed through, then you know that and you make that small tweak and you get mostly what you want or close to what you want instead of nothing at all. Uh, you know, when you just come through with a list and then it gets discussed on Devel and, and, and people say this isn't going to work and why, and then the change is not modified to reflect that, the change does get turned down when, you know, chances are it, it could have gone through with some minor tweaks. Next question. I was told to ask this. <laughs> um, <laughs> I have no idea. 
If we look at Matthew's dinosaur diagrams from the beginning and from the, uh, the, the early presentations around Fedora, the Apple usage is fairly drastic. And it does seem like Apple doesn't necessarily get the love that it should from the Fedora community. What changes would Fesco like to see to help support the Apple user base that is there? So modularity is one of the things that can help here, in my opinion, as we actually introduce support for modules in Apple 8 that is upcoming still, even though the beta was released just recently. Uh, we can build any content that is released for Rawhide for any version of Fedora. We can get it built automatically for Apple. That means uh, that you need to opt out to provide Apple content. I think that will, that will definitely help with making more content available and making sure that the package is actually built on Apple uh, and so on. So I think that's, that's one way to do it. Besides that, Apple has its own steering committee, so maybe, maybe we can work together somehow. So there have been various instances where um, stuff was added to, to Fedora or RPM, and it took a long time uh, to trickle down to, to, to be available in Apple. And uh, this makes uh, contributing to Apple unnecessarily hard, in my opinion. I think there are many times where uh, various powers that define how Apple is built could uh, make it easier to, to, to contribute to it by pushing some changes that are fairly safe, I don't know, like new macros, without delay. So is it the case with the modules that I get my magic wish of I have one stream and it just automatically gets built across all Fedora yes. releases and Apple? That's oh, okay. Thank you. That's all, that's all I wanted. Yeah. Something that is built automatically doesn't mean that there is automatically a support from the maintainers for any bugs that come in this newly built thing. What, um, I guess it's not only for the FESCO, but that's the question, what do we foresee to help maintainers to actually live with that reality that they need to expand their forces to support Apple if there is automatic rebuild? So um, the feedback on packages in Fedora right now, 29 and 30 and, and Rawhide, uh, the, um, I mean, this is very consistent that uh, when updates are released, you, you get uh, the karma for uh, the, the package in uh, the current release maybe within a day or sometimes even before the, the update hits testing. Uh, and for Fedora 29, um, you get it maybe in a month, and uh, or maybe not at all. So people who are testing stuff that we build in Fedora are also the people who are uh, running the latest stuff, and then the people who use the older uh, versions, they don't seem to contribute to, to Fedora, either testing or development or anything else. And uh, I think it's even worse for Apple. You have, I mean, I have built packages for Apple and fired an update, uh, and I don't recall getting any feedback ever. So I think that this is the problem, right? I mean, n nothing is for free, and uh, so I think that the, the sad answer is that, sorry, the, just the support uh, will not happen without uh, input from, from people who use Apple? Uh, Apple, yeah, Apple definitely has that problem. Uh, as far as, you know, the, the usage is just uh, very high, but those people who use the packages from Apple don't really engage in the community or they're not really part of our community. They're more consumers, they're using this package, and if it breaks, they just say, oh, too bad, and go on. If you even look at the number of bugs in Bugzilla uh, on Apple packages versus Fedora, 
there's hardly any Apple bugs even. Uh, and I'm sure that the packages are equally as buggy as Fedora's, but you don't see that reflected over there. So I think one thing we should look at, uh, or the Apple Steering Committee or, or something, this entire community, is how do we engage those people to know to get feedback from them, to get bugs from them, to have them join the community and like test things, that kind of thing is is really difficult. And I think uh, CentOS has this problem also in that there's so many people who use it but don't participate in the community that it's very difficult to get you know that kind of feedback. So even though we don't get this, the fact that we will be building from the same source, even though the artifact is different, and it's tested in Fedora, and we are starting to use OSCI more more <coughs> seriously now. So, and then I do actually do hope that we will improve the quality. Uh, the fact that it will be built automatically also means that uh, the packages won't have to do any extra effort to actually get the content in, or maintain it, or fix it, and and so on. So, I actually do hope that this will this will help. Yeah, all. I I don't believe in that uh, in in my particular area because there are uh, a lot of tiny but important details that prevent uh, direct rebuild and reuse of the uh, identity or authentication packages on CentOS as it is. And we know about that because we have actually CentOS admins in the upstream community being very loud uh, about wanting to have these new packages and not being able to actually run them there because of bugs and and the things. And that actually goes uh, much farther than just automatic availability of the packages. Nobody tests this delta between what is in Fedora and what is going through the uh, rail back channel into CentOS. Right, let's say this way. So if we are saying, for example, that Fedora becomes uh, an upstream for RHEL in real, like there is no delta that big that justifies the uh, ABI differences and semantic behavioral differences in various pieces of the infrastructure and the distributions themselves. Then we might get uh, some benefit from, from automatically rebuilding in Apple and contributing to pre-testing of what goes in RHEL, so kind of uh, this Apple Plus CentOS would become another upstream test bed for, for RHEL. But so far I don't see this happening and uh, I'm, I'm really concerned how we get to solve those problems that, that we, we see, particularly with ABI differences that inevitable coming from Fedora to CentOS, even with the CentOS 8. Who, or oh, let's say, where is the forum that where we should be discussing this? Is it FESCA plus Apple steering committee, or it's a, I, I guess it's a wider It's a, it's a good question. I think we should, we should start some joint discussion between EBSCO and FESCO together and, and see where it takes us. Yep. It probably would help a bit if we could, um, it's not really easy if you want to get some new feature in packages which are in RHEL. So RPM is my case. I want to get some feature in RPM in RHEL 7, let's say. It's I cannot just send pull request and get some approvals from those people. It's just you can file bug. Somebody could look on it and say we don't want probably to support it. And basically, we're evolving in Fedora a lot. We have date in the change log. We have reach dependence. We have so many new things, but sometimes it's impossible to start using them for real packages. So even those. Yeah, we can try to build them automatically, but sometimes they will start failing because we started doing new features in Fedora and they will start to be again out of sync. So if there would be some easy way how to contribute to rel packages, then that could work, I think. What I, what I was asking, but I'm saying that the automation is not an answer. It's, it's one of helpful steps, but it's not an answer to the real question. Well, and, and I think the the modularity automatic rebuild thing happens with with 
certain modules, not with every package, right? So uh, there are things that if, if I need a, a Rust stack or something like that, that's going to be much better than yeah, doing any low-level system packages or... <clears throat> But we are not going to solve this problem. It's like in the yeah. end, it's initiative of the community. Yes, yes. So, so I, I can see us trying to align the tooling, trying to uh, help with infrastructure tasks. But like in the end, it was a question to Apple community. Like, do people want that? Do people invest time in that? So there is no magic answer we can just provide to resolve this problem. If there is people working on that, they should have a tooling and a possibility. This, this is what we need to. Or for or like provide, but like we cannot replace those people with ourselves. Yeah, like <laughs> we're not going to solve that problem for them. Yeah, I see like infrastructure tooling improvements, or, like easy branching, easy cherry picking, things like that. But on in the end, like there is not that much we can do. And honestly, it's like it's a different branch. Yeah, you need to maintain a different branch. You are not going to change this. All right, we've got like five more minutes. Maybe one more topic. Does anybody else have anything? IPv6. IPv6. Let's let. Uh, yeah, uh, I think the Facebook people are going to help us with that. Uh, I got one. Uh, I look up here and I see uh, five people who are employed by Red Hat and one ex Red Hatter. Um, a, lo a lot of, uh, m most of the Red Hatters are people who you know, did awesome stuff in the Fedora community and were hired into Red Hat. Maybe, maybe all of you. Um, what, um, is this a problem? Um, is it, it's a, it's a fully elected body. There's no like Red Hat appoints people thing, but we we end up with with Red Hat dominated uh, Fesco. Um, is, is it a problem? Is there something we should do about it? Um, what what should we do? I think people, more people who are not working at Red Hat should go for the elections. And people, when they're voting, they probably should think, uh, read the interviews and think like, is it make sense or not? Because I just spoke to some number of people and what people say, oh, I know Kevin, I'm going to vote for him because he was there forever. He does awesome things in infra. He does a lot of nice things, but people just need to think like, do I vote just because I know the person and he does nice things? Or do I vote for the person who wants to do this and this and this particular thing? I would add to this maybe like we, uh, I would uh, be concerned that people uh, consider Red Hat employee, em employee as different <coughs> as, as normal Fedora contributors. Like honestly, in my case, for example, like I had 10 years Fedora experience before and, and just one year of Red Hat. The fact that I'm Red Hat employee now doesn't make me some evil, evil person who just jo joins uh, Fedora for some evil agenda. Is that so, so <laughs> I'm like still, I'm still a Fedora person. I've been here for 10 years, you know, I'm... <laughs> Yeah. You're, you're <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, so let, let's let's not differentiate people based on their employment status. But as Igor said, like try to and also like not differentiate on on the years of experience. Let's differentiate on top of what we are talking of about in their interviews. Like ask questions, engage with people. We may. Uh, consider like uh, adding more interactive sessions to fast collections, not just like free written questions. If there is a community request for it, because like we really need people initiative. Like choose your FESCO wisely. Yeah, <laughs> you you need to understand what what are your criteria and and what you want to hear when you elect people to FESCO. And let's not focus like on the employment status here. Uh, we we are not here for em employee tag. Yeah, I'll, I'll add to that that uh, in every election, I've noted in my little questionnaire, 
Uh, come ask me questions if you, if you want to know what my opinion is on something. Not once has anyone ever done that. So that kind of worries me. I would think uh, everyone should feel free to ask you know, prospective electees questions. What is your opinion on this? What are you going to do about this? What do you think of this? And I think that's very valuable. And I think that will help you choose a good FESCO. So as someone who is obviously uh, a longtime uh, contributor within the Fedora community and not employed by Red Hat, one of the things that, I, that has stopped me in the past from considering being on FESCO or FPC or council or anywhere else is the mere fact that I don't know how I would actually be able to be part of it and make the time commitments and the availability and things like that. I think one of the underlying problems is that if you're a Red Hatter and you become part of the Fedora governance in some way, it is a lot easier to be able to say, I have to make time for this and be able to be there, which is more or less that self-fulfilling prophecy that it winds up being Red Hatters even when it's not intended to be that way. So at least from my point of view, it's kind of hard because it's hard to figure out how to justify to other people what is the value of being part of the Fedora governance in some form or fashion. Even though maybe as a contributor it's obvious or someone who's deeply in the community, but like it's hard um, when it's outside of that. I mean, I'm not asking for solutions here. I'm just saying that this is, this is the legit problem I have even though I would very much like to be part of those things. And I think that's going to be the last word here because we're running out of time. Okay. What, what, one more? Okay. 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 All right. Make make it quick. We've got. So originally, I wanted to ask: uh, how, Should Red Hat stop hiring awesome people from the Fedora community? <laughs> but the uh, the answer is obvious. So my question for thinking at home is. Uh, should other companies hire awesome people from the Fedora community full time? And how do we make that happen? Something for Facebook to think about. <laughs>